Right, now, if the union flag bunting you may have seen out and about wasn't a big giveaway, it's officially Coronation Week and events are all building up to Saturday's big ceremony. Oh, on my road, there's so much bunting, so much bunting, I'm loving it. Uh, the King and Queen Consort, however, have been in Westminster today. Our Royal Correspondent Simon Vigar joins us from Buckingham Palace of all the news as to what they're doing to gearing up. So, Simon, just days away uh, from the big day, what have the couple been up to today? Hi there. Well, yeah, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, incredibly busy for them both. Uh, let's have a look at the public engagement today. Over at Westminster Hall, the King and the Queen have been there meeting uh, parliamentarians. Uh, Charles met the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, and the longest-serving uh, MPs, the uh, father and the mother of the House, first of all, and lots of other parliamentarians there ahead of the big day at the Abbey, including uh, former Prime Ministers. Some of them will get invitations, uh, but not all of them, so today was a day to meet them. And it is, Simon, a really whopping week, isn't it? Because there's a few anniversaries knocking around as well. Yeah, some uh, photos released over the weekend. William and Kate, first of all, it was their uh, 12th wedding anniversary, so this photo was released, uh, taken in Norfolk. So 12 years married uh, for them. I was reporting on that here 12 years ago. And then four years after that, I was at the Lindo Wing for the birth of Princess Charlotte. She is eight years old today. Happy birthday, Charlotte. This is the uh, image released by Kensington Palace and, of course, as usual, taken by Mum. Oh, happy birthday, Princess Charlotte. OK, so, Simon, over the last few weeks, we've covered quite a few of polls uh, looking at the relevancy of the monarchy, asking people how they feel. However, a more recent poll is actually showing that people think King Charles is making a good king. Yeah, this one's uh, gone up, uh, CL. This is a YouGov poll, up to 62% saying uh, Charles is doing a good job as king. So that's up a fair bit on what people were predicting a year ago. 60% of people in that pro poll were pro-monarchy. 26% uh, wanted to abolish the monarchy. That 26% that is pretty solid. And in another poll, 73% of people said that the monarchy has to modernise and uh, slim down, which is sort of happening naturally anyway. Uh, Princess Anne has been speaking to Canadian TV. She's been speaking about what sort of uh, king she thinks Charles will be. This is what she had to say. The monarchy provides with the Constitution a degree of long-term uh, stability that is actually quite hard to come by any other way. Mm. And, and when we think about this, t this duty, this role that the king has taken on, what kind of king do you think he'll be? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what you're getting, because he's been <laughs> practising for a bit. That's a good point. Yes, very good point. <laughs> there's, uh, there's quite a bit of talk over the weekend as well, Simon, about the invitation to, to pledge allegiance to the king at the coronation, and, and that's been discussed a little further today as well. Yeah, I think the public messaging got a bit messed up here, Dan, and maybe there was some twisting and misreporting too. Essentially, it's like the national anthem. If people want to sing the national anthem, they can. They don't have to. As far as this Pledge of Allegiance goes, people are being invited by the Archbishop of Canterbury. People are being invited as an inclusive element of the service to make that Pledge of Allegiance. They're not being told to. They're not being asked to. So people can do it uh, if they want. They don't even have to watch the coronation, of course, but I think uh, a fair few will. But whether they get involved in the pledge is completely up to them.